Welcome to the third party Transformer news for Retro Robot Radio for the date of June 13th, 2015. This week, Dr. Wu showed off some teaser images of an upcoming upgrade for Combiner Wars Devastator. This one looks to be a set of replacement arms for the Scrapper figure who Hasbro had the, in their great wisdom not only made incredibly hollow, but also a brick. It's kind of a G1 homage, right? Yeah, well anyway, since Hasbro skimped so badly on the design of Combiner Wars Devastator, um, it looks like it's up to third parties just to add things like freaking elbows. Yeah. Pretty pathetic there, Hasbro. DX9 has been teasing uh, the development of their carry figure, their version of Masterpiece Rodimus. You can see here some, co uh, some concept art. And this is the unpainted test shot of it. And supposedly this is what the painted final image is going to look like. Might need a little repro labels going on that chest there for the flames. It's just not 100%. But that's what uh, repro labels are for. You can see it looks pretty good as far as the robot mode goes, and that uh, target master does become a gigantic rifle. Uh, alternate mode is spot on, of course, and they even have uh, chromed uh, mufflers on the side. Here he is with some other uh, figures that uh, people might want to display him with, just you know, for any old reason. He does look real good next to the MP10 Optimus Prime. Gigapower has been teasing that they're going to be releasing a chrome version of their gutter figure, the HQ-03R. You can see here what some of the weapons and accessories look like. Uh, he's very, very shiny. Here's the alternate mode, very uh, original G1 looking. So I like it. It's a bit big for my taste, but uh, if you're looking for the biggest, chromiest Dinobots out there, this is definitely them. Key's Fantasy Club uh, showed off some teaser images of the comic book that's going to be coming with their double deck figure, the figure that's kind of a masterpiece uh, twin cast. As you can see here, and this is an early page in the uh, art. I'll take a look around. You can see that uh, old uh, blaster there is pretty beat up, and he's been taking care of the cassettes for many years, according to the uh, fiction. To the fiction, the gang warfare has gone on. His old Bugan clan has split up. And then in the next one that they have, they show him being. Uh, it's not in color, but then he's rebuilt as twin cast. And the cameos are amazing in the background. You have your uh, uh, reflector-inspired figure there. You got your Junkion, the Rekgar. You got your Psykill, which are both going to be coming out from KFC. You got X Transbots uh, versions of Tailgate and uh, Wind Charger. This one's very interesting. A uh, version of uh, Victory Leo. Possibly a little teaser for an announcement to go with uh, Star Saber. There's the Apollyon. Uh, lots of uh, the upcoming Junkion figures. And this thing might be... People were uh, speculating the guy on the bottom right could be an Octane figure. So that's pretty interesting. Maki Toys showed off a uh, prototype of their Masterpiece-inspired Hardhead figure. And as you can see, it's uh, very, very G1 accurate, and the uh, turret actually turns, which is something I don't think the original toy did. And here's the interesting thing, is that with their uh, cupola figure, the uh, chrome dome, it actually fits two drivers inside, so you can put one of the other ones in there. Maki Toys also showed off their visualizers uh, near finish uh, product here. That's their version of Reflector for the Masterpiece uh, collectors. 
Maki Toys also showed off their rover uh, in prototype form, who's inspired by Generation 1's Streetwise. Now, the fun thing about this is, is they're releasing these guys individually. So if you were looking to make a uh, Defensor, but didn't want to invest in like a several hundred dollar uh, box set, these guys I think are 70, 80 bucks each. So that's interesting. I wasn't really interested in their Defensor. I wish they would have done this on one of the other uh, combiners, like the uh, their version of the Computron combiner. I might have been interested in one or two of those if I had the money, but I'm definitely not interested in a multi-hundred dollar box set. Sorry. Mastermade showed off teasers of two upcoming figures. You may remember Mastermade made the transforming super deformed Metroplex. Well, it looks like they're doing a trip to Khan and an Omega Supreme. Mastermind Creations showed up what, uh, off what appear to be final product images of their Spartan figure, who's inspired by IDW's uh, Impactor. And he does come with a variety of little hand accessories like this drill. Here he is in the alternate mode. He also has a harpoon and a handgun. I wonder if there's actually a fist in there as well. Non-Nef Productions uh, showed off a little bit of a fun thing that they are going to be selling. Uh, rubber tires for the uh, Combiner Wars Menasaur figure. So if you want to have a little bit more uh, high-end collection figure, you can actually put rubber tires on yours. And I believe they are only sold as a set. Uh, but you know, considering the fact that a lot of these molds are going to be re colored and remolded into different figures, I'd have to think there's going to be other uh, options available out there. I mean, for instance, we learned recently that uh, Off-Road is going to be Ironhide and uh, Blackjack there is going to be uh, Rodimus, so maybe he'll be releasing the tires for other Combiner Wars characters, or you can just use these on them. Alright, Play With This 2 showed off a new render of one of their weapons. Uh, if you have a keen eye, you might recognize this weapon from some of the teaser art of their uh, Kickstarter earlier this year. Uh, this is the uh, mace weapon that was used on lots of the uh, promo art, although this is now a render, which means it's probably closer to being an actual toy. You can see that it was the uh, weapon on Jet Strike, their version of uh, Pretender Starscream. It was also the weapon used by the Serpents of the Coiled Table character, Sir Fanglemore Levenimus. Uh, Imperator, their version of Senator Ratbat, carried that mace, as did Rawbat, their Voltron Robeast inspired figure. So the, a lot of the uh, figures for their line just got their hand weapon, so that's kind of cool. We had this image uh, come out recently. Uh, this is what the Toy World Dinobot Combiner, the first three figures, are out now. And so you got two legs and a torso if you wanted to see what it looked like. Um, I noticed that it's actually at Toy City here, and it actually is called the Toy World Dinobot. I don't know if that's an official name for the combiner, but uh, yeah. I don't know what else. What would you guys call a Dinobot combiner if you had to give it a name and it had to be not anything that uh, Hasbro had ever used before? Maybe you should write that in the uh, show comments. Voodoo Robots showed off this test shot of their Ratchet-inspired figure. This is about an ultra-sized, uh, which kind of puts it really good into the Masterpiece collection. Uh, a lot bigger than the Eye Gear one, which is basically the same height as the uh, uh, Masterpiece Blue Streak that would be seen next to it. I've honestly always felt the Eye Gear uh, medical specialist should have been just a uh, class, a good large size classics figure, whereas uh, a lot of people always threw it into the masterpiece just because they didn't have anything. But uh, this one definitely scaled with the masterpiece figures if that's what you want to collect. You can see here he is in his alt mode. And next to the MP10 Optimus Prime. A uh, neat thing about him is these weapons that he's coming with. Uh, the top gun looks like kind of an animation accurate gun. The bottom gun is the toy accurate gun uh, that came on his trailer. So that's kind of a cool uh, combination. You get both to pick from. 
X2 Toys showed off this prototype of their trailer and some accessories add-on for the Generations Deluxe Orion PAX figure. Uh, as you can see, this is the trailer that he used in the IDW comic books, and it does transform into a little battle station. We also saw some little teaser images of their upcoming uh, high Q or Jinri inspired partner figure for the Toy World Orion or other Optimus Prime figures. Uh, we're looking to find more details on this soon. X Transbots showed off this nearly finished version of their Andres figure, who's their masterpiece Scourge. This one's about the same size as a Masterpiece Starscream figure, and he will indeed hold MP10's Matrix in the chest. So a lot of people looking forward to that, and there's your Masterpiece Fracas with him. This week's Spotlight is on the third-party Transformer article on WikiAlpha, which I helped write. I just figured I'd show everyone off uh, what uh, we have working on so far, and let you know that this is an open project that anyone can come in and help edit. Uh, but I've been helping compile a list of every third-party Transformer out there and collecting all sorts of information on them. So as you can see here, this is the main article on third-party Transformers. And if you were to go up here, you could find out all about them and their history and their names and lists. But uh, one of the useful things right at the top here is a list of all the different companies. And if you were to click on one of them, for instance, I'll click on Toy World, it takes you to a list of all the Toy World, uh, different toys that have come out, and an article on Toy World itself. So here's an article on Toy World itself. Their different projects are Grindrod and Hegemon from 2012, Aurora and Brainwave and Hardbone and Orion and Trace in 2013, B. Grant, Hegemon, Infinitor, Orionville Roar and Swamper for 2014, and it goes on and on. And if you want to click on one of the articles, like let's click on Hardbone here, and you get an article all about Hardbone and how he was developed. Uh, he was first displayed as concept art in uh, July of 2014. Uh, they had some more prototype pictures in September of or 2012, excuse me. He had a uh, colored uh, picture displayed of him in January 2013 and was released in February 2013. Uh, here's his tech specs. Here's a list of all the uh, podcasts that talked about him when he was coming out. The T-Formers News Desk, uh, WTF at TFW, TF Beyond, Radio Free Cybertron, the Cybercast. You can link directly to the articles and listen to everyone talk about the toys when they came out. I have links to YouTube reviews for the toys. And here's all the development pictures of the toy from its first concept art, its prototypes, its release, comparison to other toys, even a comparison with the original Generation 1 hardhead. You can take a look at right there. So we're trying to fi figure out to get uh, full articles for every third-party Transformer that's ever been made. And if you want to join in, just go to wikialpha.org and uh, sign in there. You'll have to make an account in order to edit. But after that, feel free to just go in and it's edited just like uh, Wikipedia is, and it's open to anyone who wants to add useful information to these articles. All right, thanks. Hope to see you there, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes on the YouTube channel. We have quite a bit of feedback on the last episode. Dinobot Maximize wrote that he's glad he waited to order the Combiner Wars Devastator. Uh, he wants to wait to see what it looks like until after he's released. Uh, he thinks that the, all the Iron Factory stuff looks great, but he does wish that the uh, Dinobots were larger, maybe a Voyager size. He's also looking at getting the Mega Steel, uh, Megatron, and Spark Toys Optimus Prime figures. Yunin Mi writes, great video and great info. Sean Markle writes, it's great to have Retro Robot Radio back, and I cracked him up when I mentioned the abomination known as Combiner Wars Devastator. He also wanted to know if the Mega Steel Granville is about the same size as Toy World Orion. Well, unfortunately, I think uh, Orion's quite a bit larger than Mega Steel Megatron. Dean G writes that he's really keen on the Maki Toys Chrome Dome. He had G1 Chrome Dome as a kid, 
and he's glad he waited on getting the Fans Project version of the character, which is Code. Stormwriter X wrote, It's a great video. It's great to see how third parties are trying to enhance the uh, Combiner Wars Devastator, but it's hard to shine a turd. Jewish Man asked if we were still doing a third party fan wish list. Sure, why not? His plug was for a Venom that fits into the uh, Fans Project Insecticon set. Uh, he just recently got the uh, Bull Toys uh, Lone Wolf figure, and it makes a great Masterpiece Motor Master. This week's screen capture is of the Martian robot Torg from the 1964 film Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. This week's news brought to you from the pages of tformers.com and TFW2005, news read by Matthew Ignash, Stop by wikialpha.org to read more about third-party Transformers. Check out the Facebook page of the third-party TF Crashers. And then come on by the Retro Robot Radio YouTube channel and subscribe.